All right, Alita King is Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece. Uh, she's the author of King Rules, 10 Truths for You, Your Family, and Our Nation to Prosper. Now, we were bringing her on here to talk about, among other things, developments in Ferguson, but then uh, the, the, the tragic reality of these latest ISIS uh, beheadings hit the news, and the good doctor wanted to uh, get a lot off, off her chest. Uh, first of all, you were telling me during the break that we, we have to realize that these, these, these are not nice guys, huh? Well, you know, in King Rules, there's a chapter, Build the Beloved Community. You cannot build a beloved community by putting young men in front of a camera and cutting their heads off. I'm 64 years old, and in America, one nation under God, in God we trust. Have we been perfect? No. Do we have our problems? Yes. But then to have the leader of our country at one point say, well, we're no longer a Christian nation. And I'm noticing now that in all the reports, when we're hearing from the White House, we're hearing various answers. But where is the righteous indignation? Where is the charitable oh, answer? What about the Geneva Convention? So we, are all rules gone now? And then do we pontificate about well we've done some strikes and we're having conversations and yet young men are being killed and beheaded before our very eyes American young men and so I'm just not happy I'm a mother and a grandmother I have sons and grandsons and this is very disturbing to me you know Duncan one of the things that comes up in this discussion is that um, well there's only so much we can do and and uh, when you hear that and that we don't have a strategy because we don't know how to how to deal with this because it's such an extreme crazy group what do you say with all of our problems and america has had problems of course we've had racism of course we've had domestic issues but we have been a charitable nation we have been a compassionate nation and to say there's nothing we could do mothers grandmothers fathers grandfathers and you just you know we're doing what we can well what do you think your uncle Martin Luther King I believe would my have done? uncle you know that's the, that's a he good question he was Mr. Nonviolence but that was a, that was a good question you had ministers like Billy Graham who's my uncle's contemporary they prayed together sure. visits to the White House visits around the world to bring peace and so my uncle today or my dad Reverend A.D. King would be urging that we stand up in righteous indignation and to speak as charitable and godly people and do something. Now, well, my do uncle. Do something did, means attack. The attack, Pope got in some trouble. Remember, remember what he said? You know, maybe we've got to attack these guys because they're pretty mean guys. I'm Sometimes overly simplifying. To bring order, you have to show righteous force. Not for the wrong what reason. What would righteous force be to you? Strike. <laughs> Honestly, go that back. That seems to go against this president's grain. Strike. It's necessary because, you know, these are our young people who are being slaughtered before our very eyes. How do you think they recruit so many of our young people? The, the one who was doing the beheading in this latest is another, you know, disenchanted Brit. What, what's going on here? Well, I'm wanting them to understand ISIS, ISIL, they do not love you. They want you to become something akin to a suicide bomber. Join them and get yourself killed. But they recruit a lot of minority Americans. What do yes, you make they do, but it's a oh, suicidal why? mission. That's what I'm trying to get. What's winning these minorities over? Anger without direction. Anger at whom? Anger, just an angry young generation, period. Not having answers, not having direction. And that's why my uncle, with six steps of nonviolence uh, principles for nonviolent social change, but you do it nonviolently. That's why I'm back to the Geneva Convention, for example. Peace talk should be on every side. And if one side doesn't want to play, then you have to have some military discipline. Your dad, your uncle, we're big advocates of, of not responding force with force. You seem to be distinguishing yourself here. Say, this is different. Why? Well, if we would do what we do best as charitable people, one nation under God, you don't have to bring out that force because you have a presence, you have a power, the righteousness of God standing with you. And people well, will these tend guys at ISIS to, or ISIS, whatever, they don't care. Because we're not demonstrating that. We're no longer one nation under God. We're not showing the power of God. We're not seeing America. You American, don't think the president believes in God? I'm not saying he doesn't believe in God, but at this time it doesn't appear that he's calling on God. And that's what's disturbing me. Would it be any different if George Bush were president, or does that matter? Well, 
I don't like to put it back to personalities. George Bush, Ronald Reagan, Daddy Bush. Yeah. And, you know, I, there I have been some uh, Democrats that I enjoyed and loved as well. I've been a Democrat and a Republican, so it's not political. But I believe that if you have God-fearing leaders in place, they're going to get the wisdom that's required. And when they are functioning with that wisdom, you don't even need as much military force. But if not to call on God and not to use military presence and authority, not to do either, that's the one I don't understand. You don't want to, do, you don't want to call on God, but you don't want to use military power either. So what are you going to use? That's very interesting. You know, Doctor, what we had a guest on prior said, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, that our debt, our economic situation, all that has led to a lot of this, uh, and that, that, that we... We're just not the, the power that we were economically, and it extends itself to how people take advantage of us, whether it's Vladimir Putin or ISIS or you name your terrorist group. Well, I would say if we went back to our, my book, Make Home a Priority, Serve Your Family, Get a Good Education, Guard Your Heart, Defend Life, Care for the Needy, Fight for Justice, Work for Peace, Build a Beloved Community, and Find Your Joy. We're not doing any of that anymore. Now, you're not taking me over to Ferguson, so, and I know this is going to be short, but I just came back from Ferguson. I said the same thing in Ferguson because this big cry, no justice, no peace. I said, well, if you K-N-O-W peace, then you can K-N-O-W justice. And people came up to me after those talks and said, thank you for saying that. I never thought about it. What did you mean by that? Well, the prince of peace is more powerful than anything else that humans can do. If people don't know the prince of peace, it's the Lord. But if there are a lot of angry African Americans, as there are in Ferguson, what do you tell them? They were angry when I went. And as I began to talk. Were they angry at you for what you said? Th at first they were, because no, no justice, no peace. I said, well, let's look at what peace is. There's power in that peace. And as I began to explain that, and I talked about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus. And they, well, that sounds good back then when you were young. I said, I faced tear gas. I faced nerve gas. My house was bombed. And I called That's on right. the same That's power right. then as I call on now. I remember your daddy after that had said, don't he, respond in kind. He stand on, stood on a car right after our home was bombed. But now you're saying respond in kind. We come back. I'm saying if necessary. Okay. If you're not going to call on the real power, which is the Lord, then do something. That's what I'm saying. But I, I, I would like for the White House at least to say, let's pray. Leaders, come up here and pray Sounds with Sounds like me. you're disappointed. I am very disappointed. President Obama, call on the leaders of prayer in this nation. Bring us back to God. Impressive, Doctor. Thank you very much. We'll have more after this. Thank you.